Okay, so we're heading home for the final stretch. Um, I was going to end up setting all this up on camera, but I kind of figured this wasn't going to be a reloading 101 basic video. Uh, maybe I can do that one in the future. But I figured just to save time, that way I don't bore you guys to death, um, just go ahead and have everything set up to what I need. That way I can just kind of cram through and show you guys my process. Um, I already got the, uh, the scale is zeroed out. Um, I already got the die set up, same with the uh, bullet seeder. I already got my powder charge uh, about to where I need the charges to be thrown full of powder. Um, what I'm using today is Lake City Brass with uh, CCI uh, number 200 primers. I'm using uh, 168 grain Amex bullets for this load. I'm using uh, IMR 4895. Uh, I'm not going to give you guys my load data, but that's just the supplies that I'm using. Um, pretty much how I get this stuff set up, um, zeroing the scale is pretty much a no-brainer. Again, I'll make a separate video of that if you guys need to learn how to do that. Same thing with the uh, the powder charge. The main thing that you need to worry about really is the, uh, the seating die. This is definitely not like the uh, decapping and resizing die. Uh, you don't want this to touch the... Uh, the case holder um, that will completely ruin your case. I've done it before. Um, it's a rookie mistake, but it happens. Um, pretty much what you want to do to set up the die is uh, go ahead and raise. Remember, what this is without the die in there already. This is to get the die set up. So go ahead and take the die out. Um, again, I'm just having everything set up that way it's cost or time effective. So go ahead and raise the ram all the way to the top. Go ahead and start inserting the uh, the die, the bullet seating die. Go ahead and go all the way down until you hit the neck of the case and then what you do is you back it out. Some people like to back it out a quarter turn, some people like to back it out half a turn, some people like to back it out um, a full turn. Um, go by whatever your reloading manual or your die set says. Um, I personally like to go a quarter turn back so basically screw in and then make sure the uh, bullet, CD, bullet seater is all the way backed out as well. Um, so basically raise the ram with the case in there without a bullet raise the ram with the case go ahead and screw this down until it touches the neck of the case to go ahead and set your crimp and then back it out a quarter turn that's what I do and then go ahead and raise your uh, your bullet seater all the way out um, and then basically just pour your powder and then go ahead and raise it in and then go ahead and drop your bullet seater down until you get the overall length that you're looking for again I already have mine set up to go ahead and save time to cut the video down that way it's not a five hour long video but still a little bit longer than I want it to be so I'll go ahead and back that down just a little bit again you make fine adjustments until you get the overall length that you want um, you do have to factor in for ogive which is basically the variation of the bullets and where the uh, bullet seater will touch your um, your bullet at so that's close enough, that's about all I need. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and start from the beginning. Again, this is our prime case with uh, no powder. I already have a powder load, but basically what I do is I throw a powder charge into my cup. And then I go ahead and measure it out uh, whenever it weighs into a zero. Again, I already have one set up right now. Um, go ahead and get your funnel, put it on there. Make sure the uh, the scale is zero to where you need it. Go ahead and tap your funnel. Make sure all the powder gets in there. Go ahead and put this on the press. Go ahead and insert the bullet. Go ahead and raise it up to the top. Go ahead and seat the bullet. And this is where your calipers come in. Again, you need a quality set of calipers and a quality manual to do this part. This is where they go hand in hand. This is the probably the most dangerous part of the reloading process, so you need to be pretty close. So 2.8 is exactly where I want to be, and then I'll go ahead and again just pour the powder, pour it in on the scale, make sure it zeroes out, and it's growing just short of where I want to be. And then I don't have a trickler; I just trickle it myself. It's not that difficult to do. Um, having a trickler is nice, but it's absolutely not needed. And then after you do this for a while, you actually get pretty good at it. So, and I'm very meticulous when I do my precision loads to get the line exactly dead center. 
So again, grab another case, grab your funnel, make sure the lips of the funnel and the case line up. You don't want to gap. You will lose powder. That's a pain in the ass. Probably lost pounds and pounds of powder from just waste. Grab another bullet. Go ahead and seat the bullet in. Raise it to the top. Go smooth and slow. Get your quality press in there. And then 2.8. Exactly where I want to be again. So that's uh, three made. And go ahead and do it again. Pour some more powder. And that's pretty much it, guys. I'll go ahead and do a couple more cases. But that's pretty much the gist of closing out your uh, reloading process. And if you guys notice, I tap most of my equipment with the powder. That way, because sometimes kernels do get stuck on the plastics and metals just from either friction or lube or something. So just give it a tap just to make sure you get every kernel in there. Let it trickle till it's just right. And then it's exactly spot on. So I'll grab another case, hook it up to the funnel, go ahead and pour the powder. Give it a tap, grab a bullet, and then go ahead and close it out. And that's pretty much the reloading process. So, you guys saw it. That one can go down just a little bit. Alright. Remember guys, slow and stay. There's no reason to rush. Especially with precision ammo, you want to do everything perfect. And there we go, 2.8. So that's pretty much the uh, 308 reloading process. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. And uh, yeah, so you guys know how I do my reloading process. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Uh, shoot me uh, messages or whatever you need to do. And uh, have a great day, guys, and enjoy reloading. Alright guys, there's just one more thing before I let you guys go that I forgot to include. Um, basically, it's just my double check, triple check. Um, it's just something that you, you should do. Um, it, depending on what I'm doing, depends on what method I use. Uh, sometimes I use a couple. Um, one of which is label. Just make sure you label all of your ammunition. Um, especially if you reload several different calibers and several different bullet weights and different loads. Um, just do jot down simple notes, like just having all the bullet information, uh, the case information, the uh, bullet weights, um, just everything that you think that you would need. Um, there's plenty of info online for what you need to use to label. Um, just do like a simple piece of paper and then tape it to the inside of your uh, ammo box. That's what I do. Um, that's what a lot of guys do. Um, just really good to keep that as a habit, um, even if you think you know what it is. If it just happens to sit in storage or maybe you have a brain fart at the range, at least you can open up the box and then this will be in the lid and then you'll know exactly what you're shooting. Um, but for like my precision reloads, when I'm spending a little bit more time with each round, um, I don't really need to think of missing a case because usually I'm doing one at a time and spending a lot of time and focus on that case. But when I'm doing a lot of bulk ammunition, like my 9mm, my 45 and my 223 and stuff like that when I'm doing larger bulk production runs. Um, I'll separate them. Usually I'll do it like kind of like an assembly line. I'll do uh, primers, then I'll do powder, and then I'll do bullets all at one time. And I uh, just kind of siphon them through. Um, that's when I use the flashlight method and then the shake method. When I'm doing bulk runs, I usually do the sh shake and flashlight method with uh, my precision loads because again, I'm spending more time with it. It's kind of harder to miss a load. I usually do the shake method. Um, there's pros and cons to both. But with the flashlight method, pretty much all you're doing is you're just looking and then you shine a flashlight on top and kind of just scan the cases and make sure each one has powder inside it just to make sure that you didn't miss one. Um, that's how you usually get squibs is when people forget to uh, load powder in there and then the primer just sends one off just enough to get in the barrel and then next thing you know you have a kaboom. Um, the shake method is pretty much what you do is you take the case and you just shake it. Uh, usually you'll be able to hear uh, the powder shake inside. 
Sometimes you go to a compress load, which means that the bullet is actually pushing down on the, the powder and squeezing it so there won't be anything to shake. But usually on most loads you can you can shake and then hear the, the powder bounce around just to make sure that you have the uh, powder in that, that case. And then if you want, you can also measure on a digital scale or something like that. If you have one, you could also um, just weigh the case outright because you got 43 grains of powder or sometimes up to like 55 grains of powder and stuff like that. So there will be some variances, but at least you'll get, if you're off by like 30 grains, obviously you're missing some powder. So it's just, again, it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, I just wanted to include that just to kind of help you guys be safer with your reloading, um, kind of give you guys new methods if you guys want checking methods. And uh, that's going to go ahead and be it. I'll go ahead and sign off the reloading video right there. And uh, again, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try and get to it. If you guys want, maybe I'll make another series of me doing my bulk reloads, like for my 223. I do that a little bit different. And uh, there's different methods with that. So again, if you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments. And I'll see you guys later.